Welcome back. We continue our discussion of Albert Einstein's special theory of relativity. Last time we discussed time dilation. This time we'll discuss length contraction. Different observers moving at different relative speeds relative to an object see different lengths. They're all correct about the length of the object. Consider this object. Let it be a table. Its length is L0. We can say L0. So called because this observer, call him Al, is, has a velocity relative to the table of a 0, hence the subscript 0. A different observer, let's call him Bert, is looking at the same table, but Bert has a speed relative to the table. Bert is moving relative to the table. V is not zero. Bert sees a length that for him is the absolute correct length, not an illusion. He isn't being deceived. He's not measuring a different length of the table because of faulty measuring apparatuses. No, his reality is true for him, just as Al's is for him. The length that Bert measures is shorter than the length Al observes, and it's found using this equation here, where you see the now very well ex known expression 1 minus beta squared. Now, this is not correct, in fact. You all should know that what goes here is the square root sign as I show correctly in this example problem, which we'll now discuss. Suppose an observer who is at rest relative to some object measures what we call the proper length of 10 meters. Let's go back and record that Al observes the proper length and Bert measures the contracted length. We wish to determine what must be the speed of the moving observer relative to this object? Maybe it's another table. In order that the correct table length for the moving observer is 6 meters. Well, we put to use the equation here in the red box. 6 equals 10 times that now very familiar parentheses to the 1 half power. And we solve for beta, we get 0 0.80. The speed of the object, or rather to say the speed of Bert relative to the table, is 8 tenths of the speed of light. Final result, 2.4 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Let's consider a couple of examples of observers who measure proper lengths and those who measure contracted lengths. Consider, for example, a catcher on a baseball team at home plate. The batter strikes the ball, runs towards first base. The catcher observes the path, the length of the path between the home plate and the first base to be a certain length. That length, that path is not moving relative to the catcher or vice versa. Therefore, the catcher measures the so-called proper length of that path. 
you imagine, you might just as well imagine that that length, that path is equivalent to the table that is that many meters long, whatever is the distance between home plate and first base. What about the runner racing toward first base? Well, what he or she is doing is analogous to a person running alongside a table and having a certain speed relative to that table. Well, the, the runner in this case is moving with respect to that path length and therefore measures a contracted length. So the catcher measures a path length from home plate to first base that is shorter than the distance the runner says he or she runs. We'll combine both types of observations of event duration and lengths of objects or distances traveled in a subsequent video lecture. That will be all for now.